What's up everybody? It's Luke James, not the singer. If you're looking to get your music reviewed, you can hit up this email that's right here. But today, I'm going to hit you up with my thoughts and opinions on this latest album from Focus to Truth. It's called Love Will Get You Killed, and you might recognize his name because I did review his Q85 project earlier this year. That was a really dope one that had a lot of boom bap production on it, a lot of great bars and flows, so make sure you check that out, and then you're going to want to check this one out too, because this is dope as well. You know what I always say, just check the information box where I got all the sites and links. But when it does come to this project right here, what I like about it is that it's really coming through with some smooth melodic vibes. He really did switch his sound up this time around, so for that I have to commend him. And someone else I have to shout out for sure is Smoking Indoors, who did a great job with the production. On the song Space, he came through with this spacey bell vibe that also has Ellen Focus dropping some really nice vocals on the hook, so this was a standout moment. And then on the track to come up, we get another very smooth and wavy beat that has some saxophone sprinkled in. I think he just did a great job on all the beats that he's on, which is pretty much all of them except for one or two, so I gotta represent for Smoking Indoors, you really helped come through with a cohesive sound on this project. But moving along, another thing I gotta shout out is some of those other vocal styles that Focus is bringing on here. I mentioned already how he brought some vocal blends with L on the song Space, and he's doing some other things on here that are a little bit different. So on the title track, he's coming through with a spoken word style where he's just pontificating on life, so this one has a very poetic and introspective feel to it. And then on the song Hope, he's working some softer sing-songy flows. So there really isn't a song on here where he's just doing the same thing all the time. He's really mixing it up and showing you that he can do these different styles. The song Hope also has some nice gentle strums on it, sounds like some harp, kind of reminds me when you visit the fairies in The Legend of Zelda, just that same shimmering type of sound, but I also found like this song was kind of dull and drab. It just sort of drags along even though it is very short, and to have a song like this so close to the beginning of the album kind of stops it a little bit. I think it would have worked if it was a little bit further into the album, because then you could maybe get more of a pace going before you come into this track, but that's just my opinion on it. Not really an awful track or one of my least favorites, but just something I wanted to shout out. But the best song on here for sure has got to be Moments. I love the production on this. You're getting some very warm strings. And once again, you're getting nice vocal blends from Focus and L. This also has a really good idea on the track because the concept is just about keeping your emotions in check. I really appreciate the way that he was speaking on that here because it's very easy to get caught up in a situation where you're feeling your anger rising or maybe you're just getting furious, annoyed, whatever the case may be, and that could cause you to maybe make a mistake or say something you don't mean. So maybe I took that wrong. That's the way that I took this track based on some of the lyrics. So I thought this was a very cool track and very easily one of my favorites. It just stood out a lot. Another standout would be Microphone Murder. This is just an all-out bar fest over a slinky bass line and an old-school vocal sample, so that was cool. But, you know, I can't say everything on this project is perfect because no project is perfect. And I would say that my least favorite track is Ken Griffey. I did like the production on this. It does have a bit of bass and some pounding action happening with it. But as is the case with a lot of sexually charged tracks, you do get some cringeworthy bars. For example, he's on here saying that uh, the girl is throwing that pussy like a frisbee. He's hitting that pussy out of the ballpark. I mean, nothing really major. It's still not an awful track, but it would be my least favorite. And even if you're doing this type of track just to be kind of silly and fun, which that might have been part of it, it just didn't really work for me that well. So sonically, it's all right. Just some of the bars and just the topic there was kind of bland. I also thought Ride For Me was one of the weaker moments on this album because it just has this sparse piano production. Really wasn't anything too exciting with that track, kind of just lulled along like some of these other tracks I mentioned, including the song Hope, so that would be one of my least favorite tracks right there. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go with a 3.5 out of 5 here. I really appreciate that he's messing around with some different styles. It certainly will fit in nice within his discography, but I also felt like this one started off kind of slow. It wasn't until about track five that it really grabbed my attention, and then from there it was much better. At the end of the day, you get a handful of tracks, but there were a couple of snoozers on this thing in my opinion. But that's just how I feel. 3.5 is fair to me. That's still a very good rating, and this might make my top 10 underground indie list, so stay tuned for that because that is right around the corner. And of course, check out my social media sites, man. You know where I'm at, so show me love and show me lots of it. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.